I sent my cheating wife on our vacation alone with no money, and then the unexpected happened. So my wife Laura and I were supposed to go on a vacation together. You know, one of those romantic tropical paradise trips you book to escape the daily grind. Well, let's just say things didn't exactly go as planned now. I should mention I found out Laura was cheating on me with her boss Larry about two weeks before our trip. An old schoolmate of mine started working in the mailroom in her office building and would sometimes get to take the mail cart around to deliver the mail. I didn't even think to tell my wife about him starting to work there, and I'm glad I didn't well. One day he messaged me and asked me if I was doing okay. I thought it was a bit odd at first, but I replied letting him know that I was good and asked how he was doing. He said fine, but then went on to tell me that he was there for me if I ever needed anything. This came off even more odd to me, so I asked him what made him decide to reach out to me. He then proceeded to tell me that he assumed that Laura and I weren't together anymore. I asked him why he would think that, and that is when he told me that Laura was known by more than a few people to be going into her boss's office for extended meetings three to five times a week. It was heavily rumored that they were doing more than talking about taxes, and so he assumed we had broken up. I was devastated. I told him, thank you for letting me know he felt horrible that I didn't have a clue. He said he was sorry, but I told him no way he did the right thing, and that he was a good friend for reaching out to me. I wanted to confront her immediately, but I couldn't decide on exactly how I was going to break that conversation open. So I waited. I decided to play it cool and pretend everything was fine until I could find the words and the strength to deal with it. I called my father and he said I should just go to her right away. But my plea with him is that I was suffering badly and that she needed to suffer. He urged me not to go to a dark place, but the more he urged me, the further into the darkness I went. Sorry, Dad. That is when I knew I had to make her suffer as I was suffering, so I thought about how I could leave her abruptly so she didn't see it coming. But it would take more than a day to pack up and leave my home of four years and then it hit me, send her on vacation alone and stay home and pack. I worked out all the details and then waited patiently. So the day of our vacation arrives and we head to the airport. I insisted on carrying both of our carry-on bags, including the one with her purse and all her money. She didn't think much of it. I mean, I was just being a helpful husband. Right when it was time to board the plane, I let her go ahead of me, just as she was about to enter the final gate. I stopped and told her I had to call my mom. I needed to give her some last-minute instructions for taking care of our cats while we were away. Laura, being none the wiser, got on the plane without me. I waited in the boarding area watching as the plane took off without me on it. Moa tried to get off the plane when she realized I wasn't coming, but the flight attendants told her they'd radio back and make sure I got on the next flight. Back in the waiting area, the staff announced my name and I approached them and let them know it was me and that I had indeed missed my flight and arranged to be on the next flight. I had done it. She was stuck on that plane, flying towards paradise all by herself. I have to tell you that was more of an adrenaline rush than I have had in a long time. I felt supercharged. I immediately headed back to the house and started packing. When she landed, she called me frantic and worried. I assured her that I'd be on the next plane and that it would be leaving in a few hours. I encouraged her to chill in the room or whatever until I got there. A few hours went by and she called again, asking how close I was to being on my plane. I told her that we were experiencing some sort of mechanical delay, but that we should be on the plane soon. LOL. By that evening she was in a panic. She was stuck in a hotel room, bored and hungry. I told her I'd make my way to a Western Union and get some money wired to her at the hotel so she could eat. I said, enjoy a good meal and to go ahead and take a walk on the beach without me, it would help her pass the time until I arrived. Needless to say, I just kept this up until it was night. I told her they moved me to a different flight and that for sure I'd be there sometime in the night. So she finally went to sleep, expecting me to be there when she woke up, but no way on the next day. She called me multiple times and each time I pretended to be on my way or dealing with some sort of delay, I wired her a small amount of money again for food, but nothing more. Meanwhile, I was packing up all my belongings and leaving our house. Moa was tormented, absolutely tormented. She just kept wondering why I just couldn't make it to our vacation destination. Little did she know that I had no intention of joining her. So by midday of day number two, I had pretty much packed everything I intended on taking with me. So I stopped responding to her calls and texts. I just stopped cold. This really freaked her out. Her parents started calling me. Her sister called me. She called the police and they went looking for me at the airport and then came by the house. I didn't answer the door. I know that is absolutely horrible, isn't it? 
Finally, my parents started calling. I answered them and apologized to Dad for not taking his advice, but that Laura needed to suffer for hurting me so bad she wasn't in any danger. She was just stuck stuck in a difficult situation that she didn't ask to be in. Just like me. My dad said that I needed to tell the police so that they would stop looking for me, so I called the number they left with my father and apologized, saying that I did not know they were looking for me. I gave them a short rundown and the officer actually laughed a little, but then got back into his professional mode and told me that he would have to at least say that they had been in contact with me and that I was safe. I didn't give him any trouble there. After all, I kind of owed one to the cops at this point, so I packed the car up and pulled it out of the garage and into the driveway. That is when Laura's sister had arrived. She was all freaked out and was asking me what in the world was going on. She saw all of my stuff in the car and raised an eyebrow and inquired again as to what was going on. So I told her about Laura and Larry and she gasped. She had no idea that was going on. I mean, she was still angry with me about leaving her sister stranded on vacation with only enough money to eat. But at the same time, she was close enough to me to see how much this had changed me and how much I was hurting. She told me that she would have to tell her sister something, so I asked her to wait one second and that I would let Laura know first. That is when I made the call. Laura answered in tears. She was frantic and losing her mind. I told her to calm down, and when she did, that is when I dropped my well-rehearsed monologue. Hey Laura, I hope you're enjoying your vacation alone. I know about your little affair with Larry. I'm filing for divorce, and I never want to see you again. And then I abruptly hung up. She tried to call back that. I rejected the call then again. Then again, so I shut my phone off. I looked at her sister. She had tears in her eyes. She gave me a hug and said she was sorry, and then she left, and then I did the same. I can only imagine the look Laura must have had on her face. When I dropped that bomb, I heard that she scrambled to get her flight rearranged so she could come home as soon as possible. But when she arrived, she was greeted by an empty house and an empty life. Now I know this was maybe a bit much for some, but I couldn't let her get away with betraying me like that. And in a way, I think it's poetic justice. She traded our life together for a flame with her boss, so now she gets to experience what it's like to be truly alone. But wait, there's more remember Larry, her stupid boss. Well, I did some digging and found out he was married and had been married to his wife and for seven years, so I used Bokio to get her number and called her to fill her in on the details of their little affair. So now they ended up getting a divorce as well, and even went one step further and called Larry's supervisor and told him everything. And now Larry lost his job because of the whole mess. Shortly thereafter, Laura lost her job as well. Boom baby. Finally the work was done, and I could now move on to rebuilding my life. So as the dust settled in, Laura's life began to crumble around her. I got an unexpected call for and she had heard about my little stunt with the vacation and reached out to me. We met up for coffee to discuss our mutual heartache and our experiences with betrayal. It was oddly therapeutic to connect with someone who understood exactly what I was going through. And, and I quickly became close friends. We supported each other through the difficult process of rebuilding our lives after our respective divorces. Our bond grew stronger as we discovered we had a lot in common, not just our unfortunate circumstances. Oh, how the universe works in mysterious ways. Meanwhile, Laura was struggling to pick up the pieces of her shattered life. She lost her job and had to move back in with her parents. I heard through the grapevine that she was having a hard time finding a job and that she took up a minimum wage job to make ends meet. It's not the life she envisioned when she threw our marriage away for a fling with her boss. That's for sure. As for Larry, he didn't fare much better, and said that after losing his job, he was unable to find another position in his field. His reputation had been tarnished, and no one wanted to hire the guy who slept with his employee and ruined two marriages in the process. He ended up working as a manager at a fast food joint, a far cry from the high-powered career he once had. I'm sure they will both end up with good jobs eventually, once their past is far enough behind them and I continued to grow closer and eventually our friendship blossomed into something more. It was surprising, considering the circumstances that brought us together, that it felt natural and right. We were both cautious having been burned before, but it seemed like fate had brought us together for a reason. She was highly empathic like me and a natural giver. Imagine that two givers in a relationship who has ever heard of such a thing. LOL in a strange twist of irony and, and I decided to take a vacation together just the two of us. We chose a completely different destination, of course, and made sure to triple-check 
that we both boarded the plane this time I even teased that I had to use the bathroom before the plane took off and pretended to start to get up and grasp my hand tightly and wouldn't let me leave my seat. Though that was all meant to be funny, it was also highly indicative of what was really going on between us and didn't want me to go ever and I knew that I didn't want to leave her either. It was during that trip that we realized we were truly in love and ready to start a new chapter in our lives together. Fast forward to today and Anne and I are happily married. We've built a beautiful life together and we're grateful every day for the second chance we were given. As for Laura and Larry, I don't know much about their lives now, nor do I care to. They made their choices and they have to live with the consequences. The moral of the story, my friends, is that sometimes life throws you a curve ball lal and you have to find a way to adapt and move forward. The trail and heartache may seem insurmountable, but with time support and a little bit of well-timed revenge, you can find happiness again. And who knows, you might even find love in the most unexpected places that one really came full circle. Would you have done anything any differently? Do you think he M will last? Let us know what you think in the comments below. When you subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell. Click here for more Tangled Threats.